Welcome to another episode of Live with Suzy. Dr. Hesam Nozari was the director of advanced periodontic in Herman Ostro's School of Dentistry of USC from 95 to 2012. Uh, he graduated from the University of Brussels in Belgium School of Dentistry. And also previous to that, he's got his PhD in biology and health science from University of Rennes in France. And um, he's been here for many, many years, I believe since 2000, and um, he's been involved with USC and the director of the school in USC and periodontology, a diplomat of the American Board of Periodontology, and um, amazing, amazing uh, work he's been doing in the past. And uh, he's very involved with our community. He does um a lot of radio and TV programs. He's done actually a few films that I definitely recommend you to go watch them and see them. And um, I don't want to talk too much since I have him on the line and it's a short program. And I promise we do the same in Farsi. But this one, this 12 minute segment is in English. Welcome Dr. Nozari to Live with Susie and it's a pleasure having you on the show with us. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for inviting me. Absolutely my pleasure. Yeah, uh, because we don't have that much time. Absolutely. You know, in the year 2000, with Jorgen Slot and Adolfo Contreras, we became interested in vi viruses. So mm -hmm. your um, listeners, they can go to any um, medical library and see our publications. And naturally, when we, we started talking about this virus, uh, we were interested in this one as well. And I can tell you something that um, we have been witnessing complete uh, scientific fraud, complete scientific fraud uh, in the United States of America and some other Western countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many people have been victim of not the virus, but scientific fraud. And I would like to go back and start with the model which was uh, suggested by Dr. Foley, a predictive mm -hmm. model. Decisions they were made based on this model. This model is completely wrong this predictive uh, model and the decisions made by decision makers, they were made based on this model as well. Uh, and that's a big problem. If okay. you go to Taiwan, a big country, I've been going there every year for the last 20 some years, organizing some symposiums there, big country, metro system, high rises, traffic, dense population. In the entire country, which is not too far from mainland China, we have had only seven people dead. Only seven people. I'm not sure if your listeners, they know about that or not. No, I'm glad you're mentioning that. that. It's important for everyone to yeah. know and, and you know, hear the truth. Yes. And if you go to uh, Hong Kong, we have lots of high rise in Hong Kong, metro system, traffic, dense population. In the entire country, we have only four people dead. Only four wow. people. And if you go to South Korea, less than 300 people. I don't know if you have been to Seoul or not. Unfortunately big city, not. <laughs> big city, traffic, high rises, dense population. We have less than 300 people dead. And if you go to Japan, the same thing. We have about 700 people dead. And if you go to Africa, Americans, they had predicted about 10 million people dead in Africa. There are 54 mm -hmm. countries in Africa, 54 countries. And you have big cities such as Casablanca, Cairo in Egypt, in South Africa, so many different countries, Algeria, the okay. whole continent, we have about uh, 7,000 people dead. That's all we have there. And if you look at the whole world, the entire earth, we have about 400,000 people. How can we accept that then we have about 110,000 people dead in the richest country on earth, United States? How is it possible that we don't see people dying left and right in India, a country with more than one billion population, one billion population? Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to wake up, to open our eyes and to start thinking and not to accept just because we have been told by the authorities to accept it. And I can tell you without any doubt that we are witnessing dark age in science, dark age in science. You are going back in time. Mm -hmm. And we are not thinking anymore. Indeed, thinking practically has been announced forbidden against the law. We are witnessing some form of uh, 
intellectual terrorism, intellectual terrorism. We should not have so many people dead in New York and New Jersey. And then you go to Cairo, you go to Egypt, you go to Algeria, you go to Morocco. There are all those dead people. So by now we have enough positive and negative controls. Mm -hmm. By now we have enough different countries, different cultures, different seasons, different backgrounds to realize that something is wrong. And I can tell you what is wrong. The model, the model which was proposed by Dr. Fauci and Dr. Birch. It was completely a scientific fraud, if not a scientific mistake. It was based on nothing practically. No okay, case. let me stop and ask you here, Dr. Nozeri. When you say it's their um, you know, mistake or giving us wrong information, is it because of their lack of knowledge or is it because there is some, something behind it, like politically? Or both. That, that, may be, that may be the excuse. We did have enough data. Okay. First, let's go to this virus. This virus was not a mysterious one. We were exposed to coronavirus for decades. And then it was sequenced by many scientists. And we know that those scientists, they provided their data to us. Mm -hmm. And it was many, many months ago. Many, many months ago. And by now I'm talking to you thousands of times the sequence of the RNA of this virus has been identified. It was provided by scientists. I'm not talking about politicians. I'm talking about scientists in China, in uh, Korea, in Taiwan, in Taiwan. But, but we decided to use data with no scientific basis to make a predictive value uh, model. We decided to ignore Taiwan. We decided to follow CDC. We decided to follow the World Health Organization. And what they have been providing has been complete uh, dishonest type of data, okay. misinformation, misinformation. And the, as a result, we are, we are seeing so many people dead in New York. And I can tell you without hesitation that the virus is not the cause of death for so many people in New York. I can tell you with no hesitation. No. So doubt, what is the, what is is the, cause, the cause of death? death in New Jersey? Okay, so tell me what is the cause of death so my viewers can follow you exactly and understand the whole picture. So what is the cause of death since the, you know, the coronavirus became known to us? Not since number it one, existed, but, you know, for the past four months. Number one is full lockdown. Full lockdown. We have never seen something like that. Mm -hmm. Full confinement with no data. We have never seen something like that in human history. So primitive approach. Lockdown. The way it was done in America is not science. Lockdown, the way it was done in, in New York and New Jersey, is not science. And then we forced so many people in those high rises, thousands of people in those high rises, for weeks and months. They had no access to fresh air. Practically, we said going out is forbidden. Breathing is forbidden. Doing the sport is forbidden. Going to hospital is forbidden. Practically everything was forbidden. And are you surprised that you have so many people dead? We I hear you. Them, practically. Yeah. We killed them. Are we surprised that we have so many people dead in New Jersey? And what makes me really sad and is that so many of those people, they even didn't get a chance to say goodbye to their own kids and grandkids. They had to die alone. And they yeah. should be alive today. And then this virus does not target kids. This virus does not target young population, young people. It targets elder population with some significant predisposing factor. It's that simple. So mm -hmm. we should have some target population. But what did we do? We decided to confine the whole country, the whole country. And rather than protecting our elderly population, we did not. We confined them. We put them in those high rises. We wouldn't allow them to get out. Uh, elevators, they were contaminated, buildings, they were contaminated. And just think about that. Since when doing sport is good, not doing sport is good for your health. Since when not breathing oxygen is mm -hmm. good for your health. Since when confining people is good for their health. And what we are going to see in the near future, we are going to see more and more problems as a result of that, not because of the virus. Okay so, okay, so what I want to understand from this conversation and kind of get to a conclusion for our 
viewers and listenership is what is Dr. Nozari's uh, suggestion and the conclusion to this virus, to this uh, COVID-19 or corona, whatever it's called. What are we supposed to do? Because here is mandatory now to wear a face mask here in, in Los Angeles, at least that I'm talking about. I don't know about other states, what the law is. And a lot of people have problems with it. And then everyone is afraid. Now they're opening places. Now they were saying in the past that if you're asymptomatic, uh, you still can give it to other people. Be careful. Now who comes and says yesterday, no, it's got nothing to do with asymptomatic. That's what I mean by confusion. They're confusing everybody and everybody's scared. So what is it that you would tell them in two minutes we have time in our English part um, for young people and young listeners that are listening mainly to this conversation to know what to do and be less afraid and um, have a bit more positivity in them? Of course, they have to be positive. And what we have to do, we have to start thinking. We cannot accept people that have been making mistakes left and right. Why do we have to trust them? And just look at other countries and don't think that everybody is lying except here in America, except CDC is not lying, except World Health Organization is not lying, except our, the American model is the correct one. No, just open our eyes. Let's go other countries in the world. And then you realize that we do have enough data not, for not trusting anymore what you are hearing in the media. Just go back and watch, for example, CNN, what they have been saying over the last five, six months. Just mm -hmm. go back and watch CBS and see what they have been saying over the past six months. Just go back and read newspapers, LA Times, for example, what they have been writing past six, seven months. When did they tell the truth? How many more mistakes they have to make for us to realize that it's time to think? It's time to think. It's 21st century, and we should not accept a new dark age in science. God bless you. So let's pay more attention. Guys, don't just accept what you hear and what you see. Do your own research and pay more attention to everything. That is what I understood from what you just said. Correct? Uh, you know, I, absolutely. I have only uh, 10 minutes. I didn't have more time, but I would be glad to communicate directly with your listeners. They can absolutely. contact me. I will go over everything with them. So hopefully in the near future, I can explain it a little bit more in detail. But and just one more time, I want your listeners to listen to what I'm going to say carefully. In the entire country of Taiwan, because of the good management, because of good scientists, not because of scientific fraud. We have only seven people dead. In Hong wow. Kong, we have only four, four people dead. Wow. And the entire continent of Africa, that Americans that predicted 10 million people they were going to die, we have only a few thousand, 54 countries. In the entire earth, they had predicted 50 million people are going to die. In America, 2.2 million people they were going to die, and it didn't happen. So all I'm asking for this first session with your listeners is just to start thinking, to God start bless thinking. You. And probably that's why we don't teach that in our schools. We just Absolutely. make our students skillful. But being skillful, it doesn't mean that you have understood critical thinking. We have to start teaching critical thinking. God bless you, Dr. Nozari. Thank I you. never have enough of what you're telling us. You have a world of knowledge and definitely 12 minutes or 12 hours wouldn't cut it. But please promise me and my listeners and viewers that you will come to us once in a while. I know how busy you are, but to just share the world of knowledge you have with us here and there at some point. But we will have a part two in Farsi with you momentarily. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I just uh, remember, don't forget that, that unlike Taiwan, unlike South Korea, unlike uh, New Zealand, unlike uh, Japan, United States of America did everything the wrong way. God bless us. <laughs> That's all I can say. Okay, we'll continue this conversation in Farsi in part two.